The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Appreciate you tuning in to kick off the trading week right here at TFNN. And where do we start things off? Surprise, surprise, positive territory. Green across the board. we got a big week. We get GDP numbers for the fourth quarter on Thursday. Okay, GDP on Thursday. We get earnings throughout the week as well. We get some big companies, Netflix, one of them. We'll jump over to that in a moment. But as we kick things off, let's check out markets in positive territory to begin the trading week. We get the S&Ps right now up by 14 points, trading at 48.83. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by about 79 points. That's about half a percent in the positive. Tech stocks leading the way. Dow up about 112. That's three-tenths percent, 38 thousand one sixty three quite a price tag man in the dow and the s p across the board russell right now have has been the laggard russell up by eight tenths percent volatility always the case in the russell up by 16 points or eight tenths percent at 1970 you jump over to bitcoin the slide continues we almost got a thirty nine thousand handle bitcoin trading down seven hundred and fifty dollars at forty thousand eight ten crude this morning seventy three sixty one i tell you the price of the gas pumps man have you been noticing it Feels like even with crude sitting where it is, gas just getting cheaper and cheaper as I keep filling up. Gold contract off by six dollars this morning, trading at 2032. Uh, excuse me, 2023. We were just up at 2032, almost within the last hour, at about 7:45 a.m. this morning. We're trading right now at 2023, and you jump to notes and bonds, and what do we got? We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield, a little bit of a reverberation of what was going on last week. We got the 10-year sitting at 4.09% right now, up by 11 ticks at 111.15. You got the 30-year up 29 ticks at 120.29. We jump over to the dollar index as we got a little bit of lower yield. We have a little bit of a weaker dollar. You're off by about five pennies at 103.23 right now. We jump over to the VIX. Last week, we saw VIX spike to 1540 on Wednesday. We've paired those gains to 1356. And yeah, you should expect the VIX will pair those gains, man. You've traded from 1540 to 1356 in that same period of time. You've had the S&Ps trade up 143 points, 140 points, about that, from 4746, 4884. Market going to open at all-time highs this morning. And as I mentioned, it's an interesting week. We get some economic data later in the week. GDP, an important one on Thursday. We get earnings throughout the week as well. Uh, but as we kick things off, let's jump around and see what we got going on. And we'll kick things off with, um, what are we going to kick it off with? Yeah, we could talk a little bit of China. That's one of the stories we're going to talk about here. We could talk a little bit of gas stations. But how about we talk a little bit of treasuries? Yields in focus. Okay, we got the Fed coming up next Wednesday. Is their meeting? Comes at you quick, right? We get GDP on Thursday. We get the Fed a week from Wednesday. That's January 31st. And then before you know it, we get to do it all over again because then we're going to start getting the January data as well. We'll see where it goes. But as I mentioned, we also have a big week of earnings this week, which we'll jump through as well. Most notably, we have Netflix out on Tuesday. A couple of the other ones out there. You got Texas Instruments on Tuesday, Lockheed Martin, Johnson and Johnson on Wednesday. You're going to get AT and T. You're going to get IBM, Las Vegas Sands, and Tesla on Wednesday. And on Thursday, you get Intel, one of the uh, notable companies out there. You also get some airline companies. You got Comcast. You got Visa. You got T-Mobile as well. And then American Express and Colgate Palmolive on Friday, among many others, coming out this week as well. So we focus on yields. Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, buy the dip is what they're talking about. Well, that's the case this morning, man. We were talking about it a little bit last week, too, when you tie it into gold, right? Be aware of the dip, folks, because I would say, and we're getting quite a break today. This is the tenure. We put it back on a daily. We've had quite a pullback here from a high of 113.12. 
made on December 27th, and you're trading right now at about 111.16. So, you know, you pull back two full points is where we're at. And, yeah, I would say those tides are going to change eventually. Things have been paired. We have the expectation right now for a March cut at about 50%. Now, that was as high as 80% only in the last week or two. So market pairing the expectations for a cut. We're at about half a percent, um, half a 50-50 shot right now as the market. I think that's going to be a tall order, man, in terms of Russian things. March 20th is the meeting they're talking about. Yeah, and I'm just not sure if it's happening, but it is coming. And time flies, as we all know, folks. And if you look where we are, okay, we've been basing for about a year and a half almost we're approaching, right? You got down to these price levels in the middle of September of 2022 in yields, okay? Middle of September 2022. Pretty remarkable. That's where we got. That's where the market may be basing and uh, probably going to see some higher price, lower yield as we come into the cuts that are expected. Some of that, of course, priced in, but we will find out how many we actually get this year. And we get to uh, find out some of that next Wednesday. Interesting to see what the chairman says. I mean, you're going to get some information because you're going to get GDP this Thursday, right? And you're really going to see if they actually think that they're going to cut on March. There's going to have to be some strong rhetoric from the chairman because the last thing he wants is that to be a surprise or up in the air. And we'll see where he goes from there. But nonetheless, we got about 17 minutes to go until the opening bell. And that's what they're talking about here in the story. Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, buy the dip. Recommend investors buy five-year U.S. Treasury notes. Five-year Treasuries sell off the most since May was what we had last week. Uh, the scope for a rebound in Treasuries on expectations data in the coming weeks may surprise to the downside. Okay, It warned the markets are still too aggressive in the pricing for an early start to the central bank interest rate cuts. So that's what I want to get to. It's almost a double whammy there, right? Data is going to be weak. And you're overpricing how many cuts you're going to get. Okay, this is the dip we have been looking to buy. That's the head of global head of ma global head of macro strategy at Morgan Stanley. That was out uh, Saturday with less fiscal support and much colder weather. We see downside risk to U.S. activity data delivered in February. Yeah, five-year U.S. yields climbed 22 basis points last week, the most since the period uh, to May 19th. And yeah, traders slashing bets. So you're at about 40% as of Friday. I was calling a 50-50, close to 40% is what they're putting at. Odds of a March reduction tumbling to near 40% on Friday. The market now expecting five quarter point cuts. What happened to six? We just wiped out a cut just like that. We haven't even gotten the January meeting yet. Six to seven reductions on January to seven. Seven? Who was talking about seven? All I heard was six. Uh, Treasury's inched higher at the longer end of the curve on Monday while the front end crept lower. Yeah, so be careful here. Um, and there's your worst weekly sell-off, 22 basis points on the five-year right there. You got some auctions for Treasury debt. A two, a five, a seven-year notes begin tomorrow, setting the stage for upward pressure on yields for those segments of the market. Well, if it's upward pressure, you're looking at lower yields. Uh, upward pressure, that's going to be lower price, yeah. That's a, that's a little bit of a, a counter argument over what they were making. Nonetheless, folks, I think yields are going down in the next 6 to 12 months. Just a matter of how fast. we got a lot to talk about on Monday. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by about 15 points, trading at 48.90, 48.84. Excuse me, made it to as high as 48.90. We check out that chart, right? A lot of Fibonacci retracements on that chart. We blow past them all, man. We trade from a price point of 41.28, almost in November, man. October 27th is that low. We're nearing 4,900 right now on the S&Ps. Dow, all-time highs. We're nearing 40,000. We're talking about 5,000 in the S&Ps. We're talking about 40,000 in the Dow, and you're potentially talking about 20,000. We got to get through 18 first, right? But boy, the way the NASDAQ is trading right now, we'll see how the earnings go. But there are some big expectations coming into this earnings season, and we kick things off. You got Netflix, you got Tesla, you got Intel this week, and we'll see where we go from there. Jumping around. Uh, Boeing. Boeing scrutiny spreads, yeah, as the FAA seeks checks on another 737 model. Look at the FAA being a little bit proactive, not waiting for doors just to pop out. BA is their symbol. Um, you catch a bounce at 200. You're up to 215. You're backing off a bit to 213.88. Yeah, not a huge reaction this morning to that news as investors aware that they have some problems right now on Boeing shares to shake out. 505 of the 737-900ER type of planes have been delivered to airlines globally. 500. And that is what the FAA recommended, recommended that airlines inspect. Um, and those are the models that use mid-aft plugs of the same type that failed on an Alaska Airlines flight this month. I mean, how does it take until... And this is just a little bit of vent and we'll jump around, okay? But how does it take? Was that where it happened? That was where it happened, right? Yeah, that was where it happened uh, when the door popped out over the weekend. From Friday, it was trading at 250. So what are we talking about? We're talking about two full weeks. So two full weeks go by until somebody at the FAA says, hey, why don't we check out the other planes using these same exact plugs that failed and allowed a door to pop out, right? Some of that stuff just, uh, how does that happen, right? So not surprising, there's 505 of them out there. An added level of safety, what they're talking about today. Uh, the FAA said in the statement, I mean, it seems like that might be something um, to ensure the door is properly secured. Noted findings with the bolts. Seems like that should have been done the moment they found them. But nonetheless, uh, Boeing, down about a buck today. 
Okay, where do we jump to from here? We're going to talk a little bit of China. We'll talk a little bit of EVs. We talked uh, Boeing. That's not what I want to talk about, though. Oh, come on. Where are we? Oh, I had a good one pulled up here. All right, I can't find that article. I'll find it afterwards. Yeah, you got AMD over there, China. Oh, shame on me. Too many good stories to kick things off. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit of China as we get nine minutes to go until the opening bell. Hong Kong stocks at 36% discount. Yeah. Deep Hong Kong sell-off shows global pessimism about China. Now, what's interesting here is you jump to the next story that I pulled up, right? BlackRock selling the Shanghai office tower at 30% discount. Asking price below the purchase value. And yeah, we got a problem with offices, but you really got a problem with offices in China. Uh, they bought two towers for $167 million in 2018. They have a fund, and they're selling them for less money than that. Finding a buyer in China's current commercial property market may be difficult. That's probably putting it lightly. Yeah, and this is for... Look at the net cap rate for grade A offices in Shanghai, though. The reason why the cap rate is so high is because the price you can buy them for is cheap. In Shanghai, office rents fell to the lowest in almost a decade last quarter and may decline further this year. Prime offices in Beijing and Shanghai traded at cap rates at about 5%, the highest in more than a decade. A rise in the cap rate, and that's the net income divided by the transaction price, usually signals a decline in real estate value so you know you're at a lofty level but boy they got some issues going on in china to put it lightly it is remarkable how many stories you get on china sometimes um, but they are a big force and it doesn't look so good man gloom over china assets is spreading beyond battered stocks the want to remind remain under pressure given poor china growth is the headline there now what's interesting is we get bank of japan tomorrow we get ecb this week as well Okay, ahead of our FOMC meeting on next Wednesday. So, you know, keep your eye out for the Bank of Japan. We jump over to the dollar yen. Backing off a bit to 147.83 right now. We jump over to the euro, euro US dollar, 108.89 right now. And we jump over to the dollar index, dollar index right now, 103.22. All right, we take a look. As I mentioned, we kick off some pretty important earnings, and we jump over to Netflix. Netflix earnings. Netflix, oh, the market's getting ahead of it, man. On a good day for stocks, we have the S&P up about 18 points right now, and you got Netflix up about $3 as well, trading at near 487 Netflix will be out with their numbers on Tuesday, and longer term, man, I mean, check it out. Quite an acceleration you start out last year at 283, we're at 482. Still well off of the all-time highs of 700. Some curiosity here. Where are we sitting on a, on a Fibonacci basis from the highs to the lows? Where are we sitting? Woo, right at that 618. Interesting action as we're sitting at 482. The 618 is at about 496, close to that 500 mark. A lot of expectation for, expectations for Netflix as we come into their earnings on Tuesday. Some of the other equities we get to kick things off as well. We get on Tuesday, you're talking about 3M, Halliburton, Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Texas Instruments, Verizon out there as well. On Wednesday, we get AT&T. We get Freeport McMoran. We get IBM, Las Vegas Sands, and Tesla. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla. Flat when you got the stock market in positive territory across the board right now. Tesla shares trading at 212.70, and you see the breakaway from that channel, man. Seems like 200 is in the cards for Tesla right now. You're trading at 212.19, and they have some issues to put it lightly. Now, we segue to BYD, this company. Hearing a lot about this Chinese company, man. Article out from the journal. I was reading this last night, I think. Yeah, they say it's updated this morning. Maybe it was early this morning I was reading it. I was up early this morning. Lamborghini-style EV. BYD goes up market to outmaneuver Tesla. Yeah, so they're expanding their electric vehicle lineup to more than 20 models in its push overseas and into higher price brackets. Look at that vehicle, man. That looks pretty dope. You got 150 grand? It could be yours. 
They're releasing cars under a different brand, brand Yang Wang, mar marking a uh, strategy shift from relying on lower-priced runarounds. Now, they just eclipsed Tesla as the biggest EV company in the world. And now they're going to make a $150,000 supercar that resembles a Lamborghini and an SUV that it says can rotate 360 degrees on the spot and float in water. I saw those new Mercedes can do that. You see that commercial for Mercedes that can do 360 turns? Seems like that's the new deal on some of those premium cars. Features that turn heads in China's cutthroat car market, passenger car market share. I mean, look at that, BYD. They are just crushing Tesla in China, of course, but they're coming for them worldwide. They're the biggest EV maker in the world and in China. We've got a lot to talk about, folks. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And welcome back, folks. we got markets open. You're looking at an S&P up by 17 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 104 as tech stocks charging this market higher. And boy, they better carry this market higher in earnings. And check it out. You jump to the expectations. So this from Bloomberg out there over the weekend. Stocks rally as Wall Street set to build on a record. And what they're talking about, though, is they're talking about everything. But boy, when you talk about big tech, check out what we're looking for. These are expected fourth quarter earnings growth by percentage, okay? 
we're kind of, we're, this is the earnings that we're coming into, fourth quarter right now. The Magnificent Seven, those seven equities alone are expected to have their earnings growth be 47%. Okay? You go down the line, and the only thing that comes close are communication services and utilities. Everything else is like pretty mediocre at best. Now, if you're not in the Tiger's Den, folks, I want you to head on over to the front page of TFNN. You can sign up for the Tiger's Den for a dollar. We had some great conversations going this morning, and I'm going to take something our man Fletch shared in this morning because it's pretty awesome. We got Jimmy in there talking as well, talking about, you know, people see the market numbers. They see that we're all-time highs. Maybe you're invested in indexes, so you're doing okay. Is there at all-time highs as well? But what you probably don't understand is that some of those equities are not doing so well if you get out of those magnificent seven. Of course, there's some doing well. This is the Russell 3000 index. Okay, the former high beginning of 2022. Okay, and this re represents 98% of investable U.S. equity market. 3,000. Okay, talking about not the S&P 500. We're talking about the Russell 3,000, not the Russell 2,000. The Russell 3,000. Okay, the high on January 4th, 2022 was 28.17. This is a great graphic. Not a lot of people would would be aware of this. Uh, not sure where you got it from, Fletch. Doesn't have any uh, sighting. Hopefully it's accurate, but nonetheless, check out, and this is where it's cool, we get the average, you get the median, right? We get some big pullbacks, man. There's still some equities that have gotten clobbered since the beginning of 2022, nowhere near the highs, right? The price point, and this is an old data, in the end of 2024 was 27.72. You're about at all-time highs for all intents and purposes, okay? But look at the average performance, now, the reason why this is a big deal is because the average performance is down 10%. The average performance of these 3,000 companies is down 10%. Well, the tiniest of companies is not going to have a very big impact on the index versus the impact of a company like Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, the likes. The median performance, okay, and the median is if you take where is the 1,500th stock, right? Because sometimes the averages can be distorted by the biggest stocks out there, minus 17%. So that means of the 3,000 stocks in the Russell 3000, half of them are down more than 17% and half are on the other side of that, which just means you're positive or down less than 17% to positive. Remarkable stat when you look at it in that context, man. Uh, not too surprising when you just take a look at the Russell 2000 in terms of all the way up to 2460 at the end of 2021. We're trading at 1978 right now, well off where we are on some of those other indices. So quite a different story when you add in some of those other equities, to put it lightly, all right? Pretty remarkable. All right, what else do we got pulled up as we got markets drifting higher to start things off? Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, all-time highs. S&Ps, all-time highs. Dow Jones, all-time highs. Russell, no. Watch out for those Russells, man. Uh, so we'll see if tech stocks can carry it. But you're talking about 47% is what the market is looking for for those equities. Um, yeah, and we'll see where we'll go from there. Only 11% of the S&P 500 has reported earnings so far. 85% of the companies in the, in the index have beat so far. It's going to be an important week as we march forward. As I mentioned, we kick it off with Netflix tomorrow. We get Tesla. We get Intel as well. And yeah, we got Bank of Japan on Tuesday, we got the ECB on Thursday, and both of those institutions are likely to leave their policy settings unchanged. And then we get fourth quarter GDP on Thursday, as I mentioned, uh, and we'll see if we get any clues in terms of what's going to happen for the Fed a week from this Wednesday. This market, though, it's just no stopping, man. We got a lift on the open, 4895 We might see 4900 for the first time ever on futures. Uh, in the next 25 minutes on this program. We will see. Let's jump around to some of the big stocks. Here you go. Apple shares. This is remarkable, man. Talk about buying the dip. Apple now up $14 from where it was just last Wednesday for a company with 15.5 billion shares outstanding. You're talking about adding almost 200 billion to the market cap over a period of a few days. Microsoft shares, different story. You actually trade lower on the open. And where are we in the battle for the biggest companies in the world? You jump over to Microsoft, 
six, two point nine six trillion. Apple might be there, right? Apple's at three probably. Two point nine nine six. Hoo wee. Apple, mere pennies away from that three trillion mark. Apple reclaiming the biggest company in the world. We jump around to some of the other equities, the magnificent seven as we come into a big earnings season. Nvidia. Up a percent, $600. How about it, man? We jump over to MetaShares, up by 1.6%. It's not stopping, man. AMD, they got a downgrade or something I saw today. What did they get? I had this one pulled up. Didn't really hit the stock too much. Uh, we'll find it. There it is. Ah, the CFO's on leave, and they cut the earnings forecast amid a probe. Well, can't. Yeah, that, that's quite a headline. Not quite the downgrade. Investigation initiated in response to the SEC's document request. And, um, oh, that's ADM. Excuse me, ADM. Look at me. No wonder No wonder I'm saying, geez, that's pretty remarkable that you just uh, catch a little bit of a lift. ADM. This is, yeah. Let's see what this stock looks like now. That's more like it, man. Down 16%. Uh, $57. Yeah, when your CFO steps away and you get SEC problems and you have to, Take a look at your financials to make sure they're even accurate. The market does not appreciate that. Nonetheless, you're down 16% for Archer Daniels Midland. AMD, down by 1.6, giving back some of the gains of the last week or so. We jump over to Tesla, up by half a percent right now to 213.84. And we jump over, yeah, we did NVIDIA, we did Tesla. Ah, Google. What's the, what are we missing here? Google, up by a full percent. Pretty remarkable tech stocks. NASDAQ 100, up by 120 points, 17,561. And as we were talking about there, so talking about BYD again, you know, Tesla had a unique position in electric vehicles. And that has changed forever, folks, okay? So be careful on Tesla. I think there's a reason why you see Elon telling the story of AI right now versus electric vehicles. I mean, remember when they weren't just an electric vehicle company, they were an energy company, right? I remember um, a lot of great investors making the case, listen, you know, they're not a car company, they're an energy company, right? And, um, when Elon became the richest man in the world, yeah, he's harnessing energy, he's changing the world. Most people, whether it's Rockefeller, whoever you are, right? You change the world in a certain degree. Amazon, Jeff Bezos, right? Energy, well, that's not even what he's talking about anymore. He's talking about AI. He's talking about AI robots that can fold your laundry for you. Be careful on the Tesla story, folks. The multiples are still bonkers. We'll finish this story when we get back. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got stocks in positive territory. How about that, Russell, man? We getting a little bit of a rotation here. Tech stocks pull back a little bit. Russell plows higher. We're up by 1.4% to 1982. You get the NASDAQ 100. We pull back to pretty much where you were right on the open, right? 15,115, still up by about four tenths percent. Apple charges higher, holding on to those gains. We're up by 1.3% for Apple shares. Microsoft, different story. We're negative by three tenths percent, just like that. Check out Meta shares. They give back the open. You're up by about seven tenths percent from Meta right now. Google gives it back a bit. You're up by eight tenths percent. We jumped over to AMD. They're giving it up, up, excuse me, down by 2.8 percent right now for AMD. NVIDIA shares still in the positive, but only by about two tenths percent. You hit 603.31, and just like that, we give up almost seven dollars from where NVIDIA was on the open. Yeah, I mentioned AMD down. Meta shares giving it up. You jump over to Tesla, excuse me, finishing this conversation on BYD, Tesla, up about one-tenth percent. So you jump back to that story. BYD expects to export 400,000 cars abroad this year, a goal that is achievable to one analyst. Okay, not sure who that is. BYD has yet to make much progress toward its main prize, Europe. They sold 13,000 cars in Europe last year. Tesla sold 270,000. You think they're coming for that market share, folks? Do you? Yeah, these are big numbers, man, okay? In China, BYD had 12% of passenger car market, Tesla under 3%. They're crushing it. Now, they're a Chinese company, okay? Not surprising, they're crushing it in China. But they're coming for the world, man. And I don't know how you compete with a Chinese company coming for the world, and it seems like they have quite a lineup of vehicles that can compete, and now they're gonna go for a broad spectrum of vehicles in terms of the upper boundaries of that 150,000 Lamborghini and SUV. They're gonna have everything. They're gonna have every option you want, and they basically sell no cars in Europe, and they're coming for Teslas, and they're coming for it here, too, folks. Yeah, you got Tesla cutting prices across the board, I mean, the Model Y, let me tell you, folks, if you're looking for a Model Y on Tesla, and I'd be careful, okay, quality assurance type deals, Tesla's got a few issues, okay, I'm not advising you to go buy a Tesla right now, folks, I've thought about it, the price, though, the price of a Model Y right now is becoming noteworthy, let's put it that, but why is it becoming noteworthy, because the Model Y has an inventory glut going on for Tesla, yeah, yeah, And look at this, a price tag of $21,000 used to be the ceiling customers were thought to be prepared to pay for Chinese branded vehicles, uh, but that's changing, man. Yeah, nonetheless, uh, we got Tesla and multiples are pretty wild. And pay attention, man, this is a, this, it's almost a perfect storm, okay? You have a Chinese EV car company is already ahead of Tesla and now they're broadening their selection 
you just saw they only made 13,000 vehicles in Europe. Tesla put out 270,000. But then you got to combine the fact that Elon is trying to pivot this company. Okay, he is trying to pivot this company into an AI growth company. What's the noise in my mic, huh? That's a bummer. Yeah, should be okay. Let me try one more time. I'll have to work on this mic, folks. Give me one second. All right, I'm not sure what's going on. I'll take a look at the next break. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback on my end as well. Uh, pay attention to the rhetoric going on because Elon is a genius promotion marketer and it is not a coincidence that he is shifting away from the numbers of the car company to some kind of growth AI potential company. Pay attention to that because it's not indicative of strong numbers coming down the line. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? Yeah, we'll take a look at this one. So, you got Rumble striking a deal out there with Barstool Sports. And here's what I'll say about this, folks. And Barstool entertains me occasionally. Davey Day Trader with his uh, antics is entertaining at some point. But most of the time, companies that are pairing up with Barstool are losing money, okay? Now, not the case this morning, of course. You got Rumble, the video streaming platform. They've struck a partnership deal with Barstool Sports. Through the partnership deal, users will get access to Barstool Sports content on the platform, including live streams. Barstool will also market and promote Rumble as their preferred video home. The deal includes an advertising arrangement through which both companies will seek to lure advertisers to the Rumble platform. Rumble said Barstool will also get access to the Rumble cloud, their cloud computing business. Now, Barstool originally sold to Penn. Penn sells it back to the owner for a dollar. But the reason why, folks, is because they were losing millions and millions and millions of dollars. And Penn ends up inking a different deal, right? They thought they could make money off the sports gambling aspect of things. $16.1 million is what Barstool lost for the first six months of 2023. And they can't even get into sports gambling. So they're reaching here a little bit. So keep that in mind as you potentially look for some type of um, euphoric rise with their partnership. Be careful with that one is how we'll put it. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump around. Yeah, we talked about, yeah, we talked a little bit of gas. We talked China. I guess this one's interesting. You got Sunoco. They're trying to buy New Star Energy for $7.3 billion. They agreed to acquire a pipeline and fuel storage company, New Star, uh, for $7.3 billion. Not bad, right? The acquisition would extend the fuel products carried by Sunoco. They're the largest, one of the largest, independent fuel retailers in the U.S. Yeah, not bad. Shares of Sunoco down about 4%, and not surprising, New Star up about 27%. Now, the other story I want to talk about out here is Macy's. So Macy's gets an offer for $5.8 billion. They turn it down. Right now, you jump over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform. You're talking about a company that's valued at $5 billion right now. <coughs> so they're getting an $800 million premium on that which is what, 16% premium, basically to where you closed, well, from where you are right now. So it's up 3.5% today on that news. And they're talking about Macy's turns down that deal to go uh, for a company to take Macy's, them private on potentially funding concerns and valuation is what they said. It is remarkable, though, how you got, you got everyone circling, right? Look at this chart on Macy's, man. Macy's is quite a brand, okay? And you got Macy's at 1826, and you are well off anything that we've seen, basically. Yeah, you got highs of COVID, uh, excuse me, lows of COVID of $4. But, you know, maybe that's a mark where we are meeting some levels where private equity is saying, hey, guess what, man? You know, these stocks have gotten clobbered. And this is a good, good example. When we talk about the Russell 2000, right? This is a good example. Macy's at the end of 2021 was at 37 bucks or at 18. 
now 50%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for one more segment. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the gold contract right now. There's some volatility for you, man. You got a spike down to 2018. We're back to 2024. You're down by four dollars on the session right now for gold. You got the market soaring. S and P's up by 27 points. Did we get 4,900? Not yet. 4,898 is the price tag on the S and P's. You go back to that gold contract. Uh, for you gold bugs out there, UBS. They'll give you some good headlines. 10% spike in gold this year as rate cut speculation swirls. Gold prices have slipped from year-end rally, and yeah, UBS, uh, they're looking for a 2024 forecast that pushes it up potentially even 15% right now. 2250 is what, by the end of the year, despite near-term volatility, and yeah, keep your eye on that gold contract. I was talking about, man, it would make sense, right, with where we have when uh, you're going to get some information a week from this Wednesday, next Wednesday, January 31st, when we hear the chairman speak in terms of how quickly they may be on that cutting schedule and whether we are going to potentially begin those cuts in March. Somewhat surprising to see if they begin those cuts in March, depending, um, considering some of the data we've gotten. We get GDP numbers this week on Thursday, so that'll be an important one as well that we'll keep our eye on jump back look at this apple man up 1.5 percent almost three dollars to the upside microsoft 
down by three tenths percent. You got to keep your eye on these tech stocks, man, because as I mentioned, they're driving so much of the action right now. Microsoft hits 400 on the open. We give it up a bit to 397. You still got the NASDAQ 100 up about 106 right now. That's six tenths percent trading at 17,544. We check out yields in the dollar as we wrap it up. You got the 10 year right now just chopping around. <clears throat> Excuse me, basically where we were when we kicked off the program. You're talking about a 10 year yield of 4.09 percent. And we jump over to the dollar index. D, X, Y is the dollar index, 103.21 to kick off the trading week. Markets relentlessly positive. Yeah, we might get 4,900 in the futures for the first time ever. We might get 18,000 in the Dow, uh, excuse me, in the NASDAQ for the first time ever. Uh, stay tuned, folks. going to be an interesting Monday. we got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Thanks so much for kicking off your trading week right here at TFNN. Stay tuned, folks, for the Tiger Technicians Hour, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great one, folks.